Well, hi everybody. Welcome back to the shop and happy new year. 2020 is going to be a great year. I just know it is. We had a wonderful time over the holidays. I hope you and yours did as well. Well, as soon as we hit the ground running here, um, schools are still out in our part for the next uh, couple of days. But as soon as they go back, um, it's audition, honor band audition times. So with that in mind, we're going to talk about some things um, that can go wrong and MacGyver your way out of. Today we're going to talk about this clarinet. Um, uh, it's got some issues, looks like. And of course, my trusty Swiss Army knife. Let me reposition the camera. Let's go. All right, everybody. Well, let's talk about clarinets. These happen a lot um when we may or may not have been playing over the over the holiday um some things start to stick um and some things start to expand so i want to start here review this g sharp a key um adjustment look down here side b flat is bent so that it's not going to close um i hear a little stiction off of that but no keys are frozen on this upper joint um everything seems to be except for this seems to be pretty good pads are in pretty decent shape nothing sticking let's see here we have no lost motion okay so we know that we have a couple of issues. Um, this is my Swiss Army knife. Same as always. Um, I do use a Swiss champ. Um, as you can see, I've modified the little screwdriver to suit my needs better. So, We're going to take this screwdriver and we're going to come in and remember what we want to see is just a tidbit of lost motion there. Just a little bit so that when the player starts playing and the warmth of their breath warms this A key up and it expands you don't want it to raise that a flat key or the G sharp key okay so remember you want to have a little bit of lost motion there okay now one thing I love about the Swiss champ is that it has these pliers and what you want to do with this to bend this key now notice that this particular bend here is a swooping bend. This key is not just bent super sharp. So what we're going to do here, let's see the best way to get at this, is probably going to be to grab a hold to this key arm and slightly flex, flex this back. And what you want to do is get this guy where these are moving independent. And notice that these are level, and these are level, so it's stair-stepped. Now, this may have a little bit of a bend still left in it. That's okay. When you take it to your repair tech, they're going to be able to get that taken care of for you. What you've done is you did not hurt the instrument you did not hurt the plating at all and now this key is operating properly again okay that's the important thing you don't want to cause more harm than good on these instruments and it really is easy to do now this is the micro screwdriver 
and as much as and as often as I use the micro screwdriver here or the small screwdriver I should say here that I've ground down it is perfect for pivot screws getting into all of these places like this and if you're if you're kind of going over someone's instrument that hasn't played all over the course of the holidays or you know it's kind of that kind of a deal you might want to, and they have a little bit of sticks and issues then you might want to go around and just half turn unscrew boom screw back in just to break up some corrosion however these are super small so that's when this guy comes into play see okay but now that can be I have big sausage fingers so th this is pretty hard for me to do let me close this up the corkscrew is not just for opening your bottle of wine you can flip that screwdriver around and lock it in the place like that isn't that cool then you have a t-handle something to grab a hold of and then you can come in and do that same operation and get it all these little screws pretty slick huh and notice that I still use my forefinger just like a when I do with my regular screwdrivers to my forefinger guides everything okay so that's just some quick little now let's check out isn't that cool okay now let's look at this bottom joint I can see already that the three ring key is stuck oh yeah see how that's binding okay so what we're going to do there's a pivot screw on these that is right here and there's another one that's up under this post here see if I can get a well no not really can't get a better angle there it is you see in there okay and so what we can do here is to see oh yeah that feels like it's binding mm -hmm. if I back that off a half turn and then snug it back up but what notice that it's still tight so this probably is not rusted the air has changed the humidity and has gotten colder so things will expand a lot of relationships will change um, with this kind of stuff keys are fit tight so if we back this guy way off I don't know if you can hear that but I, it's going clack, 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 because it's too loose and that means that the pad won't seat so you don't ever you don't want that what you want up with a pivot screw is to go until it is tight and not making any kind of cut 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 sound but it still moves freely so basically go till it tightens down and then back off like a quarter or a sixteenth of a turn until it moves freely and you can tell the difference between something that's rusted into place and something that is just temperature changed like that so from here we want to check the relationship with the AD ring key and the bridge key right for that's for the for the one in one okay remember to push down the AD ring key and remember not to squash these posts or lift this key right and rotate into place sight down the mechanism so that this is a straight line and we want to check the relationship here 
and here. Now, this is actually good, but if this weren't and you had to make an adjustment across this, you would take the instrument back apart. You would use your pliers and you would make a flexing motion either up or a flexing motion coming down to make those line up and what you want to have happen is when this key is closed this key gets primary boom primary closure this key gets secondary which means that if you were to put a feeler gauge up under here this would go tug 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 and this one would be a, a light tug you would still feel it but it would be a lighter touch okay and that gets your one and one for those notes yes okay now we have some uh-huh see how that one started working right so there's some issues in here but that is a little bit going to be a little bit more involved than what we're going to do in this video these have to close when you push this lever these have to close as a pair so sometimes you have to flex here or push this down and flex up but these have to close as a pair okay so that's the FC key and the EB key now that's pretty good we have what we have is this lever is bent on the side remember when you flex keys to straighten things back up you flex never dead pressure don't do that always with a flex yes now this moves free again this moves free this alt C uh-huh that's where our culprit is okay now let's see if we can get that guy to cooperate okay back to the pivot screw sized screwdriver and we're going to come in okay see there notice just working it back and forth this is another one of those temperature change things it's not rusted you can really feel it when it's rusted so now we have our lever closing these yes our lever opening this key and closing this key yes and then the alt c i believe that's what that is called and notice he, that's working fine now okay so those are the major things that are going to go wrong and easily taken care of with your swiss army knife or whatever uh, whatever screwdrivers and smooth jaw pliers that you decided to put in your kit okay well all right thanks everybody for watching i hope you gained some useful tips about dealing with clarinets and some of the things that you can see that can happen um, at temperature changes like what we've got going on you know here in south mississippi that we woke up this morning and it was in the i think the upper 30s and now it's 60 degrees i have my windows open and um you know i'm actually sweating a little bit <laughs> so and then it's going to cool back off tonight and what happens with um what happens in regards to the felt that's in the pads as it causes them you know they contract and uh expand and all that same kind of thing as uh everything else does wood uh, your tires for your vehicle all of that stuff so it, it's the same it's the same sort of a deal um you know coming off a marching band hopefully people got their instruments serviced and if nothing more than just a clean oil and adjust um 
And so what that is, is the horn is torn down, um, chemically cleaned to get all the funk and junk out of it from marching band. Uh, it's oiled, all the mechanisms are oiled, um, gone through the post, pivot screws, uh, on flutes, the telescoping rods, the whole bit, everything is oiled and adjusted. Adjust means to have the instrument regulated, such as what we were talking about with that one in one um, kind of a deal. Hopefully, you've taken it to your technician and uh, had that service performed. If not, then a lot of times this is the kind of thing that you'll see um, in the heat of the moment when you're in the warm up room for your audition. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So these tips will help you to uh, make your kid's horn get it on going. Or if this is for you, the player, then these are the adjustments um, that typically are going to happen and that you're going to need. Um, and this is going to get you through till you can get to your repair technician and have him uh, or her um, service it properly. And that's... That's the goal here, um, to not do anything that's going to harm this instrument, but yet you have to figure out a MacGyver fix um, to get you through, the, through your performance or to your destination. Um, I had to use my MacGyvering skills. I broke down this past weekend on the road, and, uh, <laughs> and it was you know, all I could do to MacGyver myself to uh, get to the town or to the nearest town um, and not leave my big truck on the side of the road. And uh, the next morning, we were at the repair shop when they opened at seven o'clock. Um, as a side note, don't wait till the afternoon to go see the repair technician. Be the first one at the shop if you really need it that day. Um, he will, they will appreciate you much more. So we were there at two minutes until seven, um, pleading if they could <laughs> operate on my truck and uh, so about an hour and a half later uh, we're in the waiting room and the uh, head service manager comes in there and gets me and takes me back and the diesel mechanic says um, you know I see that you've got what is this stuff I was like oh 3m my 3m tape <laughs> and there was some 3m tape I tried uh, electrical tape I tried uh, uh, duct tape, black gaffers tape. I was trying to, it was having, the fuel was having, sucking air into the system. And so I was having to stop and uh, reprime the pump like every, got down to like every five miles. Um, so it was pretty crazy. And uh, so he was kind of laughing at me and I was laughing as well. And he said, do you want me to leave this? I was like, oh no, you can take that off. Um, I didn't want to do anything that was going to harm and cause cost me more money and he kind of chuckled and and said well i wish more folks would think about that kind of thing so even on your cars you might want to put that one in the memory bank just to think about <laughs> even when you're having to macgyver yourself down the road uh, think about what it's going to cost at the repair shop hey everybody thanks very much for watching the videos um, like i said we're going to have a great 2020 um, i'm having fun doing these videos and uh, thinking outside the box. Um, that's not the way I repair things in the shop, but it is how I would go about doing emergency repairs in the field. Um, my goal is to save you money um, and not harm an instrument and, and do the dead level best for your kids out there. Um, have them perform at their top. Uh, that's, that's always the goal. That's always the goal, the number one goal. And then when you come to see me in my, when I have my apron on, then I can tell you how we're gonna fix it like the right way with big hammers and stuff like that. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.